Okay, what's up guys? Jacob here with Smetting Performance. The Hoonigan 441 LS7 is fully machined and now finally ready for assembly. In this build, I'm going to do a Smetting 4340 4.125 stroke crankshaft. This crank is fully forged, internally balanced, super badass. Then on top of those, we're going to do our Smetting H-beam 6.125 rods, uh, ARP 2000 rod bolts for the extra RPM durability. And then we have our custom JE 13 to 1 compression forged pistons, super nice. We then are doing a custom 254, 267 duration billet camshaft. And these pistons are really trick. They actually have lateral gas ports cut into them. You can see them there on that top ring land, those little holes. And basically as the gas expands, the gases are going to come around that piston, go into the holes, and then put pressure on the back side of the ring, expanding it and conforming it to the board to give us some extra ring seal. Um, speaking of the rings, we're doing a total seal micro thin ring pack. These are 0.9, 0.9, millimeter rings, super thin. It's a stainless steel top ring, followed by a Napier second and a low tension oil. We're running coated bearings, of course. Um, quick note on coated bearings. Coated bearings actually um, the coating only helps you in the event of an oil loss or starvation. Other than that, the crankshaft is riding on a film of oil, so it doesn't know that the bearing is coated underneath it. However, if that film of oil ever goes away for some reason, whether it's cavitation or lack of oil, um, that's when the coating is going to help be an extra added layer of insurance. So, first things first, I'm going to check bearing clearances, gap rings, Assemble the rods onto the pistons, put the rings on the pistons, put the bearings in the rods, and then we can drop the crank and stuff this motor. The main caps on these LS7 blocks are billet steel which makes them much stronger and stiffer than regular ductile iron. And they're actually doweled as well to the block. Let me show you that. So right here you can see the dowels that fixture and line up the main cap to the engine block. This way everything is perfectly square and in a line and it makes the cap much more rigid as it vibrates and moves around on the cap at really high RPM with a lot of horsepower. Here are the main bearings. We're gonna put these into the block and the main cap, retorque the mains to final spec, and then we'll check bearing clearance. Okay, back to the smetting crankshaft now. We're gonna take our micrometer and we're gonna zero these anvils to the distance and the diameter of this main journal. Then I'm gonna take the style bore gauge and zero it out to the micrometer. And then we would know when we put this inside of the engine block, we'll have an accurate measurement to the tenth of a thousandth of what the bearing clearance is. Okay, with those bearings, I currently have too much clearance, so I'm gonna step down to a smaller size bearing and recheck them then. Fast forward a little bit, I got the bearings swapped out. We're now running a tighter set of main bearings in this block, which is gonna tighten up the clearance on our crankshaft. You don't want too much clearance because then the oil won't be strongly supported, basically, and the oil will just be flopping around and the crank will have no real pressure from the oil to hold it in place. So, a little tighter set of mains, Let's see what these bearings come in at. Alrighty, these main bearings are perfect. Now we're going to move on to the rod bearings and get those set.
So there are lots of different types of bearings available and that's especially the case with rod bearings. Um, the big difference between a race bearing and a street bearing is not the fact that it's coated. Remember the coating is really only there to help in case of an oil starvation. But you can see here if I stick my, cow my mic in here currently we have about 2.2 thousandths clearance and that's vertical in the rod. Okay. Now if I recheck my clearance here at kind of a diagonal angle look at this we have almost five thou of clearance and that's actually okay that's by design so this bearing while it seems like a perfect circle is actually an oval it's a lot tighter here but much looser here now on a high RPM engine when this piston comes up to top dead center on the exhaust stroke there's nothing there sort of cushioning the piston when it rises the top dead center on the compression stroke it's forcing and compressing all of that air into the combustion chamber before it ignites however on the exhaust stroke it's pushing all of that air out of the exhaust so when it does that this piston is going to see anywhere from six to ten thousand g-forces a lot of that force is going to travel through the wrist pin into the connecting rod and come down to these little ARP 2000 rod bolts. Now, these are very, very strong rods with very good rod bolts. These are the Smetting H-Beam LS Power Adder Rod. Um, however, everything flexes a little bit. So what happens is that piston is going to be just ripping on it with thousands and thousands of G-forces on that rod, ripping it apart, and these bolts are going to stretch just a little bit. And when this circle stretches, it's going to open up this way and then it's going to pinch in the middle here. So a race bearing is going to have a lot looser clearance here so that when it does pinch and the rod stretches, we still have clearance there. A street bearing is going to be much more circular and much more round around this diameter of the journal because a street motor obviously isn't going to be pushed. It's not going to see 8,000, 7,000 RPM downshifts going into a corner on a road race, on a road course. So that is the big difference between a race bearing and a street bearing is having that extra clearance there for really high RPM applications. So main bearings are checked, rod bearings are checked. Let's move on to the rings. So the next step in sealing this bad boy up are these Total Seal AP Steel rings. It stands for Advanced Profile and these are a micro thin 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and 3.0 ring set. And because these rings are so thin, they're able to, con one, they're super lightweight, and whenever we can remove weight, it's gonna help out the connecting rod and the whole engine. And two, because they're so thin, they're actually easy to flex and move around. And because they're easy to flex, they'll conform to the engine bore as the engine is running, if the engine has any flex in it at all. Um, so we're running a stainless top ring, a Napier second, and Napier, I don't know if I'll be able to get it to focus, but it actually has a hook on the ring itself. You can kind of see it. It has a hook on the ring that's going to physically scrape the oil off the bores, and then we have a low tension oil ring. Um, so we're going to get these gapped for a road race application that's going to be 13 plus compression running nice and hot and once these are gapped we can assemble them on our beautiful pistons hang the pistons on the rods and then finally stuff this monster after piston rings have been gapped they leave these really nasty burrs on the edge that you were cutting them on and so next, I'm going to come back with a small diamond file and clean up that little burr so it doesn't hang up and scratch the piston or the cylinder walls.
Okay, here's a really good shot of those lateral gas ports. So you can see here, we have our top stainless ring. And then above it, there's a little hole. There are little holes going around the piston. And what's going to happen is the piston is going to combust in the end, or the engine is going to combust. And then all those hot gases are going to come over the piston, go around the piston a little bit. They're then going to come into these holes behind the top ring and then apply pressure out on the ring as the piston travels. That's going to increase the ring seal on the compression or on the power stroke and give us overall more power. So, the time has finally come where everything is done, everything is checked, everything's clean. We are finally ready to assemble the 441. Okay, the next step in this build is going to be installing our Billet Custom Smetting Camshaft. This cam is 254 intake duration and 267 exhaust duration. Again, we are feeding 441 cubic inches of Fury. And uh, this thing is going to sound so badass. Let's get this bad boy in here. And we'll continue on buttoning up this motor. The dots are lined up, now we can install the oil pump. This is the Melling 10295, it's a standard volume high pressure pump. Um, 
these LS motors do not need high volume pumps unless you're trying to do a very high RPM stock connecting rod type deal because that rod is going to flex so much that you're going to need that extra oil volume. However, because we have the aftermarket super strong rods, we're going to run the standard volume but still run the high pressure since we're going to be turning a lot of RPM. And this pump you can change the pressure relief spring and so we're going to do that and put the copo spring in it. Right now I'm shimming the, I'm getting ready to shim the pump so that everything is perfectly aligned inside. I have a video going into depth about what this process does, why we do it, and as well as how, as well as how to do it. It's super easy and I highly recommend doing it whenever you're changing pumps on an LS engine. Long story short, we want this outer gear to be perfectly aligned with our pump housing. You can see there's some play in it because there's no dowels holding this to the block because we don't want the pump gear riding up against that soft aluminum housing. So, we're going to stick some feeler gauges in it and get this bad boy aligned. Just like so. And then we can torque it down. Go ahead and lubricate some of the gears. And then with some Loctite, we'll put that front cover back on. Underneath this little plug is the pressure relief spring. which we're going to change for a higher pressure unit. So we're going to take this red spring out and we're going to drop this Copo Camaro spring in. That's what it's called. And then we'll reinstall this plug. And that's going to boost the oil pressure that this engine is allowed to produce before that relief valve opens. And we'll come back and torque it down. Alright guys, it's probably a hundred degrees in my shop right now. Texas summer heat is not a joke. But, good news is, the 441 7.23 liters if you're not an American. V8 is ready to go. Again, we'll go over the details. Smetting, 4.125, forged steel, internally balanced, super badass crank, coupled with our Smetting Power Adder, 6125 HBM LS rods, topped off with ARP 2000 rod bolts. This is gonna be a 58X motor. So we have a billet timing set with a thrust bearing on the back to cut down on the internal friction. Melling Copo standard volume oil pump, spinner up top. JE Custom, forged, coated, you name it, it's got it. Lateral gas port, pistons, 13 and a quarter to one compression. And inside there you can see the brain of the beast. Custom smetting, billet, big old honking camshaft. This is about to be the internet's rowdiest street LS engine that y'all have ever seen. I cannot wait to get this beast on the dyno. That wraps it up for the short block. I'm going to go ahead and pop the lifters in. Let's get those down here. We're going to run Johnson hydraulic roller link bar lifters. And I say street motor because we've got hydraulic roller, the best lifters. And this motor is going to run pure E85 so we can easily run 13 plus to one compression and never have any issues. The 85 is an awesome fuel. Not only is it natively about 105 to 109 octane, but its oxygen content is way higher than gasoline and that's why E85 actually makes more power by itself is because it has a higher oxygen content than gasoline. 
It also allows you to make more power because it has higher octane. Remember, octane does not make more power. It allows you to make more power. However, oxygen does make more power. So, I'm gonna get these lifters popped into the block. And after that, we can finish assembling the heads and go over those and talk about what we're gonna use to feed this beast.